Hi. There are many times when I'm using OBS that I want to use some transparent graphics. Now I have the full Adobe Suite, I have DaVinci Resolve, I have all the very high-tech expensive tools. The problem is they're complex and um, many times I just want to do something very simple. Uh, the other problem is I do a lot of my analysis in Excel and I do some of my presentations in PowerPoint. So I'd like to just reuse them, because again they're simple to use, to create these transparent graphics. So I'm going to show you some transparent graphics I created in PowerPoint. So I can just take anything in my PowerPoint deck that I've animated and create a, uh, a clip that's transparent that I can use in OBS. Or I can create a ProRes file to use in DaVinci Resolve because it has the transparent background. In this video, I'm going to show you how. Here's the workbook um, I've created to, for my animations. In the first uh, slide, I've just put some uh, folder paths where my FFmpeg is, um, where I'm going to export my various files. If I just want to do one slide, I want to put the number in here. Um, I have some notes over here about what I'm doing. Technical stuff you don't need to worry about if you don't want to. And here are those slides that you saw in the, uh, in the previous animation. So we're going to create a new slide. So. I'll just take this one and I'll uh, duplicate the slide and I'm just going to take out all this, uh, all the existing stuff and we just, we're just left with the green background uh, and let's just insert a text box. So just do the old hello, hello world text box and I'm going to uh, Let's see, I'm going to make that, make it larger, make it bolder. I'm going to go into the animations and I'm going to create an animation. I'll do a fly in and I'm going to slow the fly, fly in down to about two seconds. I'm going to open the animation pane. Let me play it, see how it looks. That looks good. So we've created our, our, our graphic. I'm on slide eight. Now, if I whatever I put in here, it'll name the, the clip. So let's just put in, name this hello world. This is a uh, slide number eight. And I'm going to go into uh, Visual Basic. Now, what you would do once you get this going is you just run your, your thing from right here. Actually, we can just do that, come to think of it. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna change this to eight because this is where, this is a slide we're gonna to want to uh, export. So we're going to developer, go to macros, I have a thing called export only one slide, that'll take the eight and it'll create it. So I'm gonna run. And you can see down here it's saying creating video hello world. So the first thing it does is it creates just a standard um, mp4 file and then it calls ffmpeg through the command prompt to create the webm file uh, which I'll go into in a bit uh, and this will take a little bit of time uh, okay so it should be done um, I'm gonna go look in my folder uh, to see if it's uh, if it's there And it should be in the WebM folder. And there it is, Hello World. So I'm going to play Hello World. And uh, you should see it now. There's a green background. So how can we test that it's actually transparent? Let's close out of here. And I'm going to go open um, Firefox, which uh, has a built-in... Well, I mean, Chrome does too. I don't know why Chrome shows the green background, but... Um, Firefox is better in that if it has a um, a transparent background, it'll just show the, the, it'll use that transparency. So we have that here. Let's go back to our file. And we're gonna drag what we just created over into this Firefox. And it should play it. There you have it. Though you can't see it very well because it's black on transparent. Uh, so let's actually go into this. Let me go back into my um, uh, narration here. And I'm going to add a, um, 
I'm going to add a, a graphic here, though of course you won't be able to see that, um, but you know what I'm doing. I'll go into my sources, click Add, uh, pick Meteor Source, say OK, browse to that file, Hello World, pick it, and now we should see it coming up here. And there you go. Easy peasy. Okay, now I'm going to go into some of the technical details. Okay, so how does this work? Um, if we go into our uh, format background and we go to color and we go to more colors and then we go to custom, you'll see that green is at 255 and everything is zero. So in hexadecimal, we set our background to 00FF00. And we're going to use that in our program. Well, we're going to send that to FFmpeg to basically remove all green and uh, put in a transparent. Anyway, but that's the way you do it. You could also set it to blue and it'll also work. Um, and I'll explain why that's an issue. Uh, well, let me just explain right now. The one drawback of uh, what how this works is that when they move along their shadows and it's like partially green, it doesn't remove all the green. And so you get like a green tint. So that's a negative of this approach. Um, some work better than others. So, um, but anyway, just something to, to be aware of. Maybe somebody out there can, can help us fix that. Anyway, but that's the only drawback actually I can see at the moment. We're gonna go into the code. So I'm gonna take you through the code um, of what it does. Um, so the first thing is we set up some of our mem memory variables. Now, and then we said we we're gonna want save save our files. So we we have a directory where we're going to save our mp4s. I have a directory where I'm going to save my M, web M, M files. Now again, you don't have to do it this way. You can do it another way if you know how to program or whatever. But essentially, um, you're going to have, um, if, you, if, you're, if you follow your system sort of like my system, uh, then you're going to have essentially your, uh, your PowerPoint in a, in a folder and then you have three subfolders a WebM folder, an MP4 folder, an FFmpeg folder. I should take that back. You probably won't do it this way. You put FFmpeg somewhere else and, you know, wherever it is, it's installed in your machine, you'll just point to there. But you'd have your um, MP4 folder and your WebM folder. So again, you don't need anything. You could have it set up to just do it all in one, one folder. Anyway, that's how I have it set up for now. So we set up our, our folders. Um, I set it up that I'm gonna use green as default. I set up my, now in FFmpeg, when it goes to take out the green, uh, it'll do a similarity. If it's one, um, it would basically take out uh, the most it can find. Um, so point two I find works well. This is just something you can play with. And the chroma blend is how much it would sort of blend the edges of where it finds these colors. Again, I just found that these were the best. Hopefully somebody out there who starts using this will come back with better settings than these, but these are the settings that I can figure out for now. These are just some notes on various FFmpeg settings I, I had. They just left here um, for reference. Uh, so what I do here is I create a shell for, uh, for FFmpeg because realize that uh, in this uh, approach, um, PowerPoint VBA is going to shell to a, a command prompt to run FFmpeg. Anyway, we set that here. Then I get the number of slides I have. I'm always going to start, actually, I've changed this now. I'm always going to start on slide three. And then if uh, our slide number is more than three, um, uh, I'll do the, and, um, well, the, the, sorry, the global slide number um, is greater than three. Um, you know, if it's set, if you put in, oops, if you put in something up here, uh, if you put in eight or seven or whatever, uh, and then it would set the slide start slide into that slide. So when we just did that slide eight, it said, oh, it's eight. We have a value for G slide number um, is eight. So we're going to set that for eight to eight. Otherwise, we're going to start from three and go to the end of the slides in the in the deck. Okay, so P, I, slide, start to slide end. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky part <laughs> to get your head around. Uh, you can't tell PowerPoint just to create a, a, a video from one slide. It'll do the whole deck. So the way to get around that 
is we hide all the slides except the one slide we want to do and then we call the export. So that's what's happening here. We say from export one to slide count, if we're on the slide that we're going to want to in our loop, in our master loop, if we're on four, let's just say, um, and the slide run does not equal four, then we're going to hide it. Otherwise, we're going to make it true. So let's just say we're going through this. So it starts on three. It starts on this slide. It will it'll start this three. Then it'll go into another loop within this, go through all the slides and make all the slides that aren't three hidden. Right? So now we only have our slide three is ready. We check the backgrounds of the slide. If it's green, we use green. If it's blue, we use blue. Red is red. And then this we generate our FFmpeg command, which is going to be um, our configuration, uh, um, which is uh, up here. I'm sorry. The configuration is going to equal essentially the bit rate of the video to, to megabits. Uh, the filter is going to be chroma key, then our color, and then the similarity settings, uh, which we set um, up above here. And uh, then it's going to be format RGBA in the scales 19, 20, 10, 80. Oh, you know, sorry, I forgot to go over one thing. Why isn't this thing up here? Where is, um, where is the, uh, oh, 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 I'm sorry, because we're setting up for F our FFmpeg before we even actually created the video. But anyway, okay, sorry. So in the FFmpeg 1920 to 1080, um, we're going to use the VP9, which is basically WebM, uh, though it's being upgraded, and we're going to use that. And the Y says we're going to overwrite the file. Okay, so the notes, remember I said how the notes would have our file name. So if we have something in our notes, call our file with that. Otherwise, just call it slide one, slide two, whatever, if we don't have anything in that notes notes. Um, text box. Okay, so we have FFmpeg ready, but we haven't called it yet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a an MP4 video using a PowerPoint's export function. So we, we're using 4K, we use maximum quality, uh, and the reason we're using 4K is we want to, the way that uh, MPEG video works, and I'm not going to go into it, but it basically blurs colors. So the higher resolution we start with, the better uh, uh, chroma keying will get in the end. So that's why we set it to 4K. So it's going to run, uh, it's going to create the uh, the 4K file. We need to tell PowerPoint to wait till it's done. So we have to go through some, uh, what I consider kludgy stuff, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> we just have to do this stuff. And once that's finished, once we've created our MP4 file with our one slide that's not hidden, then we create our uh, FFmpeg uh, command, which will be basically our path to the FFmpeg uh, executable, the path to our MP4 file, which PowerPoint just created, the configuration for FFmpeg, and then the file output, which would be something .webm probably, right? And then here's where we just run in a shell that program, and we have some error code, so I'm not using it at the moment. Um, and then once that's done, we've done the slide. Now we're going to go through all the slides again and make them all unhidden. So they're not hidden. We go up back up to slide four, let's just say. So in slide four, we go through them all again, one through whatever. If P, slide four, equals this inner loop, hide them all except for slide four. Again, set up our FFmpeg that we're going to ultimately use to create a transparent WebM file from the the mp4 file that Microsoft created, create our mp4 file, and then um, uh, create our M mpeg3 uh, file. Um, and let me um, show you, so right here, when it created hello world, it created this first in that, in that thing, then it took that and it created this one here. So that's sort of the process, creates the mp4, then creates the, uh, the webm. Uh, FFmpeg, this is just sort of a small version of FFmpeg, but wherever you, wherever you, you know, put it in your computer, just make sure you point to there, and then everything should work fine. I've also created a GitHub where I put that file and any other files um, for you to use, so you can check here to get the latest, greatest. Um, there's also a batch file that I use um, to, uh, sorry, not that one. 
um, they can use manually. They can just draw, drop a um, an MP4 file onto this, so call FFmpeg and create um, the, the transparent WebM. So you can use this to experiment, or maybe you don't want to go through the convoluted VBA stuff and just export the whole PowerPoint as a MP4 file, and then just drag that file onto this um, into this batch file that you have set up with your path to FFmpeg, and it'll create one long WebM, and then you can just cut and whatever, use that, whatever, it'll be whatever you're going to use it for. Okay, well, thanks for watching. Again, the issues we need to figure out is some of the green or blue fringing on some of the animations. Um, another thing good to add a little bit more to is, you know, creating the ProRes files if you want to use in DaVinci Resolve, because DaVinci Resolve, you can import uh, WebM files, and maybe this other software uh, that's like that. Anyway, please, if you have any ideas on how to improve this, um, go comment or on the GitHub page or contact me, whatever. And if you want to take the project over, <laughs> that'd be great. Anyway, I hope this is a good start for anybody that wants to use their PowerPoint uh, to create animated graphics. And by the way, you don't have to you don't have to make them transparent. You know, you can just use it to just create like block little videos that you can put into your um, into your OBS. So that's one of the things that's sort of solving in that thing is doing a slide by slide uh, export. So you, you know, you don't have to use the FFmpeg. You could just use this to create um, a video for each slide where you get to name what that video will be by using the the notes box on the slide. Anyway, I hope this is a good start uh, for everyone, and thanks for watching.